Hi everyone. In our previous sessions, we covered various aspects of elimination pharmacokinetics. But those discussions were all in the context of what we normally call first order or linear pharmacokinetics. In this presentation, I would like to take you through the concepts and applications of a non-linear type of pharmacokinetic model. That might help you to think in terms of the problems doctors have in managing the dosing of patients being treated with the anti-epileptic drug phenytoin. It's usually a tricky affair. The reason for this difficulty is because phenytoin is subject to a non-linear type of pharmacokinetics. This non-linear type of pharmacokinetics is often thought to be something uncommon or occurring only under extraordinary circumstances. But actually, it may not be that uncommon as we will see. Quite simply, non-linearity usually happens as a consequence of the saturation of some process involved in drug disposition. Saturability is normal in every biological process as long as you can keep increasing the concentration of the substrate. The biological processes that concern us here are those involved in drug disposition. Commonly, these are drug transporters, enzymes, and binding proteins. For the sake of this discussion, we will just concentrate on enzymes involved in drug metabolism. Now, the reason for our concern is that the saturability of enzymes causes therapeutic difficulties. In a linear system, there is a constant and direct relationship between those and steady-state concentrations of a drug. But with the saturation of the drug metabolism enzymes, drug concentrations rise disproportionately with any increase in dose. Let me explain. You have seen this graph before. In the linear pharmacokinetic model, the elimination rate is concentration dependent and clearance is a constant. On a semi-log plot, get a straight line where the slope is the elimination rate constant. Under these circumstances, there is a direct relationship between the dose and the area under the curve. As you increase the dose, the area under the curve increases proportionately. If you have to make dosage adjustments, this is a relatively easy task. Under non-linear kinetics, however, the rate of elimination is not concentration dependent, but is a constant. Here, clearance becomes inversely related to the concentration. The semi-log plot here is convex. Because the clearance is inversely related to the concentrations, as you increase the dose, the clearance decreases and the area under the curve show disproportionately large increases. In most textbooks, the linear and non-linear pharmacokinetics are presented as if they are alternate realities. Actually, not unlike what I've just shown you. Unfortunately, this is an oversimplification and it represents a false dichotomy. In reality, linear and non-linear models are merely opposite extremes of the same continuum. You see, the elimination rate of any drug is actually described by a function that is similar to the michaelis menten expression for enzyme kinetics. That is, Vmax times concentration divided by Km plus concentration. Using this expression, the full elimination profile looks something like this. This is in fact the simulation of a large single dose profile for phenytoin. Now, if concentrations are very much lower compared to the Km of the elimination process, the term Km plus C simplifies to Km and the equation approximates a first-order model. In this case, because for phenytoin, the Km is about 0.009 mg per mil, the truly linear part of the profile is best seen in the curved lower right extreme of the plot, a bit beyond the range shown. By contrast, if concentrations are much higher compared to Km, the concentration term may be eliminated from the equation. Here it approximates a zero-order model. 
You can see this best at the extreme top left of the plot, where the elimination profile approximates a straight line. Now this straight line actually represents the Vmax of the rate of elimination. You can see that the true zero order occurs only at the extreme upper end of the plot. For the most part, the curve deviates from the maximum rate until it approaches first order at the other extreme end of the graph. Note also that the therapeutic range for phenytoin is somewhere midway between these two extremes where it's neither completely zero or first order. Under such conditions, you really need to be very careful about dosage adjustments. Most drugs probably operate somewhere between the extremes, perhaps more towards one than the other, but not being completely first or completely zero order. Here I'm showing you a series of plots showing the changes in steady state concentrations following increasing doses of phenytoin. You can see how easy it is for the concentrations to move out of the therapeutic range with only relatively minor changes to the dose. Note also how the time to reach steady state changes. Look at the highest dose. Here, the steady state hasn't even been established after two weeks. Now, I hope you can now better understand and appreciate the complexities introduced by non-linearity in elimination kinetics. And here are some tips that might be useful for you. If you have to make dosage adjustments, please do so cautiously. Please check plasma concentrations regularly. And if you are dosing with phenytoin, a loading dose may be necessary because it takes so long to reach a steady state. Okay guys, we'll have more for you in the coming weeks that deals with clearance concepts and clearance mechanisms. So please check in regularly and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you again very soon.